Hello guys, welcome to Learn 360 Degree. Already we have covered Units and Measurement Part 1 and 2 which is very useful for HSTR, GPSTR or upcoming examinations where physics is necessary. In Part 1 of Units and Measurement, we have covered Fundamental and Derived Units. In Part 2 of Units and Measurement, we have covered System of Units with Standard Units and their Definitions and in this Part 3, we are going to cover what is the exact meaning of dimension? What is the importance of dimensional formula? And some di important dimensional formula here we are going to cover. So let's begin with units and measurement part 3. Before going to start, please subscribe the channel. So, dimension. What is the meaning of dimension? What is the importance of dimension? So let's begin. Dimension of any physical quantity are those powers which are raised on fundamental units to express its units. The expression which shows how and which of which of the base quantities represents the dimension of physical quantity is called as dimensional. While writing dimensional formula, you have to convert all the quantity or whole quantity in terms of mass, length and time. That is nothing but you have to form or construct a dimensional formula means if I took the velocity. Well, we know that velocity is nothing but distance divided by time means which is the distance is measured in terms of length and time is measured in terms of Time and length is measured in terms of meter and time is measured in terms of second. Now the unit of this velocity is meter per second. But here we have to write mass. Here no mass is required while writing the formula of velocity. So mass is taken as zero. Length. Length is meter. So x only one power of meter is there. So either you can write one or you can keep as, as it is L. Then time. Time is there but it is in denominator so power of t will become minus 1. So we have expressed this velocity as m0 l1 t raised to minus 1 or you can skip this m because its power is 0. You can write only l t raised to minus 1. This is a dimensional formula for velocity. Next, dimension formula of some practical quantities. Area. We know that area can be calculated as if we took area of square, then it is a side by side. If x is a side measured in centimeter, centimeter means again it is a length. So, we don't require mass and we don't require time to calculate the area. Hence, we require only length that is to centimeter into centimeter is centimeter square or meter into meter is meter square. Hence, we collectively take it as L square means length square. If you took a length in meter, it's a meter square. If it is in CGS system, it is centimeter square. Then volume. We know that volume is if you... Uh, if you take any, uh, this is a cuboid, if we took the volume of this means length into breadth into height. All these three measurements are in terms of length only, meter, meter and meter. Then obviously it is L cube, that is meter cube. Again here, no need to write meter because, uh, sorry, mass, it, it is a zero. Again, we not required here T, it is a zero. So I skipped M and T. Only we have taken L where length is required. Similarly, velocity just we have taken L t raised to minus 1 meter per second. Again, acceleration. Acceleration is nothing but velocity, change in velocity with respect to time. Already we have velocity L into t raised to minus 1 divided by t means again the power of t is raised to minus 2. How it comes? So, this is well, uh, dimension formula of velocity is L into t raised to minus 1 and dimension formula for time is t and if we took uh, this denominator t term to numerator then uh, it will become L into t raised to minus 2. Like this you have to construct uh, the dimension formulas for force, work energy, power, pressure, 
linear momentum density and strain just you have to use the formula i will take this one also force force is nothing but a mass into acceleration i will take this as small m mass into acceleration and already we know that acceleration formula is dimension formula is l into t raised to minus 2 so mass means m raised to 1 into acceleration l into t raised to minus 2 collectively we got here m l t raised to minus 2 its unit is newton similarly for work m l square t raised to minus 2 it's measured in joule you can construct by yourself power m l square t raised to minus 3 unit is joules per second or watt pressure or stress uh, dimension formula for pressure and stress both are same m l raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 2 this is newton per meter square next linear momentum or impulse m l t raised to minus 1 this is kg meter per second dense density density is nothing but just by using this dimension formula you can tell that m means this is a mass density can be written as mass per unit volume and volume is nothing but l cube mass is nothing but m so m by l cube is m l raised to power minus 3 this is kg per meter cube strain strain is a dimensional less and hence it is a unit less next modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity can be written in terms of dimensional formula m l raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 2 newton per meter square surface tension m t raised to minus 2 newton per meter velocity gradient t raised to minus 1 and this is per second no need to write here mass and length because we describe velocity gradient in terms of time only next coefficient of velocity m l raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 1 unit is kg per meter per second gravitational constant m raised to minus 1 l cube t raised to minus 2 newton meter square per kg square you can try yourself how to write these or how to construct these uh, dimension formula by using just the formulas of these terms moment of inertia m l square this is written in kg per sorry kg meter square angular velocity t raised to minus 1 that is radian per second here we have a term theta means angular distance we have to take instead of l we will write theta next angular acceleration again here theta will come uh, because radian means angle is measured in terms of radian per second square angular momentum m l square t raised to minus 1 kg meter square per second specific heat l square t raised to minus 2 theta raised to 1 minus 1 kilo calories per kg per kelvin latent heat l square t raised to minus 2 kilo calories per kg planck's constant m l square t raised to minus 1 joules per second universal gas constant m l square t raised to minus 2 theta raised to minus 1 that is joules per mole kelvin like this we have to write a dimensional formula again here we have one more important concept homogeneity principle this is very important for the point of examination if a dimension of left hand side of an equation is equal to the dimension of a right hand side of a same equation then that equation is said to dimensionally correct and this is known as homogeneity principle mathematically lhs is equal to rhs so we will see this homogeneity principle with a with very simple example just already we have taken we have written already that velocity can be written as distance by time velocity can be written as distance by time already we have written this and we know that it is correct just we have to check this by using homogeneity principle just we have to prove now it that velocity is equal to distance by time we know that the dimensional formula of velocity right here similarly write the rhs also in terms of dimensional formula so a distance can be written as m raised to 0 l raised to 1 
t raised to 0 and time can be written as m raised to 0, l raised to 0, t raised to 1 and dimensional formula of velocity is l sorry m raised to 0, l raised to 1, t raised to minus 1. Now we have to solve this LHS and RHS like that uh, it should mathematically correct. So LHS is m raised to 0, l1, t raised to minus 1 and RHS is m raised to 0, l raised to 1, t raised to 0. We will skip 0 terms. I will write only l raised to 1 at upper side and only t raised to 1 at lower side. The rule is every time you have to write this bracket. So, RHS will become uh, m raised to 0, l raised to 1. This t will come when numer when it come to numerator, it will become t raised to minus 1. Just compare the LHS and RHS. Here we have got a dimension formula as m raised to 0, m raised to 0. l raised to 1, l raised to 1. t raised to minus 1, t raised to minus 1. Means, the, here we can apply homogeneity principle or this principle we call it as homogeneity principle and this is used in many uh, formulas to check whether it is a dimensionally or a mathematically correct or not. Hence we say that velocity is equal to distance by time is a correct formula. So we will see the applications of dimension or dimensional formulas. To check the accuracy of equation, just we have checked that distance by time, this formula is correct. So just like that, we have to, while, you, while checking the accuracy of physical equation, we can use the dimensions. Next, to change the physical quantity from one system of units to another system of units. You can uh, follow this. Means, uh, if one system of units, uh, if CGS system is given and we have written a dimension formula in CGS system to convert that into a, another unit, maybe in MKS or FPS system, we can use the same dimension formula to check whether it is correctly converted or not. Next, to obtain the relation between different physical quantities means just we have taken velocity is equal to distance by time. Distance is one physical quantity, velocity is another physical quantity. Just we have taken a relation between the velocity and distance and we have obtained the relation between velocity and time. Like that, we can use the dimension formula in various fields. In today's class, we covered dimension, dimension formulas of many physical quantities and applications of these physical quantities. Thank you so much guys for watching this. Please subscribe the channel if you liked this.